In a previous video, I went through most of the core roles in cybersecurity and of course there are infinite variations of titles and even the same job from organization to organization can differ but the idea here was to help people get some direction into what they might want to pursue. Now you all know that I'm a big fan of side projects, probably because when I was trying to get into cybersecurity and improve my skills, we didn't have much in the way of courses and platforms at the time and at least ones that didn't break the bank and so a lot of us used to build and break things in our spare time to learn. The other benefit of these side projects is that it gives you something to talk about confidently in your interview rather than just giving surface level answers to questions and I really think this is important to set you apart from others. So today we'll run through a bunch of ideas and if you have something that you want to contribute then let us know down in the comments below. As always if you enjoy the video then don't forget to like and subscribe and let's dive in. In. So following the same format as the previous video, let's start with the red team roles and penetration testing. And first up, if you haven't built your own AD lab, then I think this is something that every pen tester should do. So that's a good place to start. But after that, I would look to create tools or workflows that let you try attacks, but at scale. The example I've used before is a script that connects to open shares and searches for credentials in the scripts and documents that it finds. And this is a really useful tool when you're working against a large network and you'll learn quite a bit about how to interact with different versions of SMB, writing code that is efficient in that it might connect to multiple shares at once, and also how to write regex that can find information that's useful to you. For web app pen testing, I personally think that building web apps and CTFs is the best way to get a deeper understanding of how web apps work and what code or misconfiguration is needed for specific bugs. But beyond this, we can look at building extensions for tools like Burp Suite and Kaido or simply doing bug bounty or start searching for CVEs in open source projects. Moving on to red team operators where we need to be looking more closely at persistence and bypasses for things like EDR. We can simply look at expanding our home lab and either recreating a TTP chain from advanced persistent threat reports or we can look to explore detection and evasion and either publish our findings or keep a matrix of up-to-date techniques. Personally I would build a lab where we pull the latest versions of things like Defender and automatically test bypasses and then publish the results to somewhere accessible and we'll have the results and versions that we can refer to anytime to understand which which versions of something like Defender detect which techniques. And this could easily be displayed in a visual matrix, adding more impact if you're sharing or demonstrating it at an interview. And finally, we're going to wrap up the red team section with the vulnerability assessor. And I think a key part of this job is automation, but also understanding context. So we could look at projects that take the results of a scan and then pass them with some logic like system tags, which could be as simple as client machine, DMZ, internal, external facing, etc., and then re-evaluating the ratings of those results based on that logic. Comparisons of different tools is also useful and gives you exposure to different products that you'll be interacting with in your role. Now, in the ever-evolving field of cybersecurity, practical skills matter. TCM security certifications provide you with realistic lab environments and scenario-based exams. You'll tackle challenges mirroring real-life threats guided by seasoned professionals. Jumpstart your journey at certifications.tcm-sec.com and be the cyber expert the world needs. Moving on to blue team roles, similar to pen testers, I think building an AD lab is a really important first project, but also looking at adding tools like Splunk is of course important here. So what I'd suggest here is after getting past the basic setup, simulate some attacks and then look to see what kind of indicators of compromise you can find and write detection rules for that attack. After that, repeat the attack and then document your findings once again and verify that your rules actually worked. I think if you can do this once a week, you're going to be building some really solid skills over time. For forensics, side projects can include working with publicly available images or memory dumps from CTFs or past DFER challenges and walking through your process from acquisition to analysis. Document everything, talk about what artifacts you found, what tools you used and why, and what the information means. 
means. Going through this process is really valuable and it's the kind of stuff that really helps when you're trying to show your approach and thinking. And of course, you can choose from a variety of mediums to share these insights like blog posts or videos or simply just keep them ready for when you're talking at an interview. Next, we have malware analysis. And whilst this isn't something that I'm particularly familiar with, I think it naturally lends itself to side projects because there's so much that you can do. Start with setting up a safe environment and begin by analyzing known samples from public repositories. And I definitely spend some time looking at identifying behaviors and extracting IOCs and writing some Yara rules. Out of the malware analysts I know and follow, the best ones share small and frequent bits of learning. For threat hunting, you want to be doing two things, getting better at forming a hypothesis and learning how to look for specific behavior and patterns. So you can start with logs like from Windows or Linux or firewalls and form some kind of theory like what if someone was extracting data using DNS and then go from there to test that theory. Can you simulate it, detect it and alert on it? These types of small projects demonstrate critical thinking and familiarity with TTPs. Security engineers I think should focus on building and automating things. So creating a hardened Linux image or writing some Ansible playbooks for configuration management or build a dashboard that shows the asset patch status. And one idea that I really like is to make a lab with multiple VMs and simulate a vulnerability lifecycle. So discovery, triage, patching, validation, and then also creating a guide on this so that others can recreate it is going to make you check your understanding of every part of that life cycle and also enable you to explain it really confidently during your interview. All right, so let's move on to some side projects for GRC roles. And if you're looking at analyst roles, then I think the best side projects are things like building a compliance checklist for a web app against common controls like the ISO 27001 or CIS controls, and then walking through how you'd go about implementing and auditing them. For risk managers, maybe creating a simple risk register for a fictional company and including things like likelihood, impact, and mitigation strategies, and then building out a couple of tabletop exercise scripts too. And this shows you're thinking about risk as a narrative and not just a spreadsheet. And pulling it up and talking your interviewer through it during an interview is going to really set you apart. Security auditors could look at building audit templates for common systems, for example, Active Directory or AWS, and then walking through how you'd collect and verify the evidence. A mock audit report with sample findings can be a strong portfolio piece. For compliance managers, I think staying up to date with changes in regulations and building comparison documents, for example, between GDPR and CCPA, and creating an easy to maintain tracker in something that's accessible, like Notion, showing how a company might map out compliance for a new regulation is a great project to work on. And finally, for DPOs or privacy roles, a really good project is mapping out an application's data flow and creating a DSA or data subject access request response templates. You could also run through mock breach scenarios and look at notification timelines and regulator communications. Moving on to our final section for leadership roles, if you're heading towards being a CISO, think about what a high level strategy might look like. So since it's a high level role, you'll need to be thinking about including people, processes and technology and what, am I, what a 90 day plan look like, what does good look like. These are questions that might get thrown at you off the bat during an interview. So having some concrete ideas already formed is going to be really helpful. And finally, for product managers, I think that designing a mock roadmap for a security product is a great way to go. You can include user stories, prioritize features, and show how you'd manage technical debt versus features. If you also tie this back to customer problems and security risks and demonstrate the reasons why you mapped something out in a specific way, then this is all also going to help us improve our understanding and give us more great talking points during our interview. And that's it for this video. If you've done a cool side project or you're working on one right now, then let us know down in the comments below. Maybe it'll help somebody else get started or even land their first job. Catch you next time.